Hello, my name is Angela Tuff and I lead the Messy Church at Rygate Methodist. It is so good to be back after the summer break. How are you all? Did you manage to have a good summer? Did you go out for a couple of days maybe? Have a day trip, go and see some groovy stuff? Well, we actually managed to get away for a few days. I went on a canal boat with my family and it was just what we needed. It was relaxing, it was peaceful, and the sun shone as well. So we were truly lucky. Really hope you had some good days as well. And of course, for most of you, or some of you, how's school? Is it good to be back? Are you a bit nervous, some of you? Well, you know, it is okay to be nervous, um, but just remember every single day, it will just feel a little bit more normal and you'll soon get used to it. How are all your friends? Is it great to see them? Have they changed? Are they a bit taller? Talking of your classmates, before I read the Bible passage we're going to focus on today, I want all of you at school to think about your classmates, you know, your friends, how different they are, are they the same? Um, adults who do the school run, who do you see at the gate? What do they look like? Who are you guys at work? Who's in your team? What are their backgrounds? Where have they come from? Keep that in your mind while I read us a passage today. You are no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You are no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name as Christian as anyone. That was taken from Ephesians chapter two verse 19. God wants us all to belong so we have people around us so we're not lonely so we feel valued and that we've got people to help us. Here's a story about a person that we'll call Malcolm. Now Malcolm lived in a beautiful huge house with a lovely garden and Malcolm decided that he wanted to have a family and he thought actually I'm going to choose my family. So um, Malcolm was a man, so he decided that only men were allowed in his family. Malcolm had dark hair, so he decided that only men with dark hair could be in his family. Malcolm also liked to play ping pong, so he decided that only men with dark hair who liked to play ping pong could be in his family. Now Malcolm was rich, so he decided actually only rich men with dark hair who liked to play ping pong could be in his family. Also, Malcolm was British, so he decided that only rich British men with dark hair who liked to play ping pong could be in his family. Also, Malcolm liked cauliflower flavoured crisps. So he decided that only British, rich men with dark hair who liked to play ping pong and who liked cauliflower flavoured crisps could be in his family. There they were, all this lovely family, um, until one day Malcolm had a look around and he thought, actually, there's something not quite right here. What happens if one of our family, suddenly their hair starts to go grey, or we become bald? And all the rich white men with dark hair who like to play ping pong and eat cauliflower flavoured crisps, they looked at each other in horror. And then he thought, well, what about all the other people that might enjoy my lovely, big, huge house with a lovely garden? What about the women and children? What about all the things that our money can buy, other people might like to enjoy those. And what about all the other flavours from the mulch pack of crisps? Who's going to eat those? So the family got together in little groups and they decided, well, shall we stay together or shall we invite other people in? And I wonder what they decided. Did they stay safe and cosy? Or did they invite other people in? I wonder how hard that decision might have been. Of course, Malcolm's family, it doesn't really exist. But 
sometimes we take it for granted just how everybody in God's family belongs. We forget how amazing it is that absolutely anybody is welcome. It doesn't matter what country they've come from, it doesn't matter what they look like, it doesn't matter how rich they are or what sort of life they've chosen to live up until now. Because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, the doors to God's huge, beautiful family are wide open. Paul said, you are no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here, with as much right to the name as Christian as anybody else. Today though, so many people do feel like strangers and outsiders in the country where they live, where they were born even. People feel that sometimes other people think their lives, their work, their talent, don't mean as much as other people's, but just because of what they look like or where they were born or who they choose to love or how rich they are, somehow they are less important. Our evidence shows that our systems in our work, in our schools, in our health system, they were set up many, many years ago. They were set up by rich white men. So it's not really surprising that they benefit rich white men. That might, that might not have been their intention, but unfortunately that is the result. They do not benefit the wider community, our diverse neighbours, our own brothers and sisters. God, he treats us as equals and therefore makes us equals. We don't get to choose who is more entitled than somebody else. We know even if sometimes we have to look really deep into our hearts, we know what is unfair. God has shown us, the Holy Spirit guides us every single day to think and to do better. We therefore have a responsibility, not only to God, but to ourselves, to champion change, to use our underlying privilege to change and challenge those unfair practices and systems. Our ancestors may not have got it right, but with the Holy Spirit to guide us, we can change things and make a difference. Listen to the way Paul explained it in a letter to some people who had never before been welcomed or accepted into God's family. Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. The cross got us to embrace, and that was the end of the hostility. Christ came and preached peace to the outsiders and peace to us insiders. He treated us as equals and therefore made us equals. Through him, we both share the same spirit and have equal access to the Father. That's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You are no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name as a Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here in what he is building. He used the apostles and the prophets as the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. And that's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 16 to 22. It's a bit like making an omelette. I'll explain in my kitchen. Okay, so let's make an omelette. So we have some eggs here. And look, can you see they've all got different shades of colour on their skin. Let's break those into a bowl.
so they look pretty much the same inside. Let's whisk them up. That looks like it needs something else to make it a bit more exciting. What about some herbs? And a bit of spice. And some chilies. Ooh. Bit of salt. A bit of pepper. There, that looks good. Let's mix that up. Right, now we need the pan and some oil so it doesn't stick. Maybe a bit of cheese. Now what can we put it on? You don't want a plain plate. I know, how about this one? Look, it's full of colour and there's lots of different patterns on there. Perfect. We look different on the outside and it does seem that we look the same on the inside, but in fact, we are so much more than that. All our different experiences, how we think, how we work, what is special to us, how we see things, this is what is important to understand. We are all different and because God treats us as equals, he makes us equal. All our differences, all our herbs, all our spices, all our cheese, all our salt and pepper, all our differences all have equal importance. They are equally needed, are of equal value. You belong here with as much right to the name as Christian as anyone God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here in what he's building, fitting you all in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. Did you hear that bit? Christ Jesus holds all the parts together. Not some, all the parts. So next time you make an omelette, Think about all your wonderful friends and family and how different we all are and how we are all equal and all valued. So we can challenge our own views and our own beliefs so that we can welcome everybody into God's family. It is great to see top shows making a stand too. Strictly Come Dancing have just announced their first single sex dance couple. There are some great books out there as well to challenge and inform us to be anti-racist. One of them, We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay, was brought to my attention by one of our young people and she's done a great review in the Alive magazine. Big names are also getting involved in the refugee crisis. The famous artist Banksy has funded a rescue boat in the Mediterranean Sea to save refugees fleeing across the sea. Gary Lineker is about to welcome a refugee into his home. All these things show a hopeful future where just as God treats us as equals and therefore makes us equal, everybody can be accepted and valued. God wants us all to belong so we feel valued, so that we're not lonely and we have people around to help us. That's why he invented the church, a great big, huge, beautiful family. So that all of us, no matter what we've done, where we come from, what we look like, we can all be welcomed. Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we can all belong to God's wonderful family. And that is amazing. So now we're going to do our craft. So we're going to do two crafts today. Um, the first one is going to be a little hanger. And it's just to remind us of all the different people and different experiences that 
all belong in God's family. This one, the small one, I just used some um, different coloured paper, but I also use on the um, the Rainbow Pride one, just just plain paper, just coloured it in. So you know, whatever you've got. And what I'm going to do for this big one, what I've done is I've actually gone through a magazine and found the different colours, and then I've just used that. And the magazine that I've used is this one because it came through the post today or the other day. And you know, you go through it, and there's some different colours and what have you. And I really like this bit here, so that's going to be my final one. And because you have to do lots of different hearts, I've done some templates. So it's up to you, but it saves trying to draw hearts over and over again. Because I have to say, I'm not very good at drawing hearts. So place a template on the picture and the colour, draw around and then cut it out. There you go. So now what we do is we attach some string or some, uh, some ribbon. You just need to set tape for that. So here's my bit of ribbon and then you can attach it to here. Now I've made mine all different lengths to make it look a bit more groovy. Okay, so I've just attached it on the back with sellotape. And there you go, there's our little banner with all our different people. And that's gonna be cool. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna do a mosaic with our fingerprints because different people come from different places and they have different arts and different way of doing things. And it's really good to learn to do the different things and to see how fun and how amazing it is. So here we go. White piece of paper. I've got some different colored paints. I've got a bowl of water to wash my fingers and an old tea cloth to dry my hands on. So let's go home. And then I'm going to do yellow. And you just keep building it up as you go with different colours. And there you go. It's my mosaic picture. Now you can do squares, you can just do stripes. You can do whatever you like. I'm quite pleased with that. My very own Roman mosaic. Well, thank you for watching our messy church again. And I hope that you have a lovely few weeks and we'll see what happens, whether we're online again or whether we're back together. But either way, I will see you next time. And don't forget, life is very messy. Bye-bye.